What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Soul Food Sundays. My name is Keita. Thank you for joining me. Just kind of clearing the space because I've been doing quite a bit of work at my new station and definitely want to make sure that we are starting with some clean, clear energy. <laughs> I will not be before you long as I am preparing to go get this oral surgery thing out of the way <laughs> but i wanted to make sure <clears throat> to leave you guys with a message as i'm not sure when the next time will be when i'm able to bring forth another soul food uh sunday's message or at least one where i'm speaking i think i may do a little variation as to where if i'm not in any pain i'm able to um uh, download or channel a message and type it up in the form of a video for you guys and so we on the lookout for that um my books are currently closed while i uh, take some time to recover but as soon as i am able to get back in action i definitely will um, sign up for updates on my uh, website at turquoisemajesty.com and that way you will be notified uh, when my books are open and you'll be able to book your services if you so wish to so i hope y'all are doing well i hope that you are being intentional about the seven seven portal energies we had on yesterday um which was thursday uh, pretty intense energy but all of it is for our good we also have a new moon coming up not a new moon a full moon a full moon in capricorn which happens to be my rising sign um and so people are about to see a shift <laughs> in my uh outward representation not necessarily like my aesthetic but just how i connect with and am viewed or, or perceived uh, by people may possibly change because that's my rising sign uh, and people very much see me as the CEO type, you know, a boss, uh, about my money and things like that. And um, that's a very Capricorn energy, um, it's an earth energy. So we're wanting to make sure to prioritize grounding. We're still very much in an energy of needing this happen to our feminine energy, regardless of our sex or gender. And so we're going to pull from the goddess power deck and then um and then the moonology since it's a full moon um i may get a self-care message we'll see how things flow but we're gonna get into it so father god mother earth ancestors and spirit guys we thank you for your love and light we thank you for joining us in this moment to bring forth the best messages for our highest good we thank you for the way that you shield and protect each and every one of us from seeing and unseen dangers. We thank you for how you provide for us and we thank you in advance for the message that you are about to provide for our highest good. And so it is. All right, y'all. Tapping into this feminine energy. Tapping into our goddess power. Which one of these goddesses has a message for us? Hold on, because I know for a fact I'm missing a card in this deck. Like you supposed to put stuff back <laughs> where you got it from or where it belongs in the moment and i know for a fact i was working with my ocean card and i didn't put it back in this deck so that's one individual we know <laughs> won't be coming out but we very much are needing to tap into that ocean energy so we can go ahead and talk about that right now and we have her representation here with the peacock feathers um, 
Oshun, the Orisha is very much a energy of love, having a zest for life, life force, energy. She's um, an energy of uh, enjoying the finer things in life. Oshun is bright. She's sexy. She's attractive. Um, and that is the type of energy that we're definitely needing to um, tap into as we move forward in these energies and enjoy this summer season. Oshun is confident. She doesn't have to put other women down and other to exalt herself. She just is, you know. She can um, uphold and uh, cheer for um, other women and not feel like she's being slighted in any way. You know what I'm saying? Because she has the strength of knowing the power of divine femininity. She is the embodiment of the power of divine femininity. And she prioritizes self-care. She loves honey because she likes sweet experiences and sweet things. And she's the goddess of the sweet waters. And so she likes sweet love. She don't want to and um, involve herself in a type of love where um, there's toxicity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always look at it like, like some relationships, the people, <laughs> they shit talk each other and tear each other down or where I'm from, we call it checking. They check each other or see who can outsmart talk um, each other and that is a product of um, your upbringing. It's a product of your upbringing. It's a product of it, your environment, but it doesn't have to be that way. And the way I look at it is that love and any love relationship that you're in, whether it's your family or your friends, um, is a, it's like a bank, you know what I'm saying? It's like an account. And I personally want to do things that make deposits into people's love banks including with how i speak to them um and i look at that mistreatment or that uh unsweet love where you out you trying to out mistreat each other your egos are having a battle where okay you did this to me so i'm gonna do this to you you said this to me so i'm gonna say this to you y'all there are so many relationships out here where they trying to out cheat each other you have made an agreement to be together, but then you stay together once you have both have made uh, broken the agreement, and then and then so you cheated, so I would go cheat because I'm gonna show you that two can play that game, and then I'm gonna go give me two or three, or I'm gonna I'm going too deep in my relationship with the person that I'm cheating with because subconsciously or maybe even consciously I'm trying to show you that I can cheat better than you. Like that's foolishness, yo. <laughs> <laughs> it's foolishness. I ain't going to do the emotional abuse. I'm not going to do the verbal abuse. I'm not doing the physical abuse. Because in the spirit of Oshun, you're going to love me and you're going to love me right. Or you're going to get your ass away from me. Period, poo. <laughs> so we definitely want to tap into our Oshun energy of for one, leveling up our standards, honey. Raise your standards. Practice self-care. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Now, don't judge me, honey. I've been sick. Got well for a brief moment. Long enough to go get a pedicure. My toes look good. But I don't see no point in getting my nails done because they need to kind of heal or whatever after having that acrylic. But um, Let's make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Be a little extra with your bath and pour you some essential oils off in there or some, some Epsom salt. You need to be doing that anyway. That's spiritual self-care, spiritual hygiene. Um, polish your toes. Look down at your feet. Your feet looking horrible. Like, go get that nail file or go get those tweezers and, 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 and tend to those cuticles. Put some oil on your feet. Don't just put any old oil. Put your old good oil a good quality oil. Um, last night I took a, a hyssop bath with some um, hyssop herbs and um, olive oil. Oh my God, my skin had never felt so soft and I don't play by my skincare products. But that right there, those two simple ingredients did it. But yeah, you wanna prioritize your self-care, 
Um, you want to prioritize love. You want to be intentional about being loving. You want to take time out to explore what may be um, an issue for you as it relates to love. Like, are you not being forgiving? Are you holding on to some things? Are you not loving on yourself? Uh, therefore, not attracting loving relationships. And so we done got a whole message from Osho, honey. And she ain't, ooh, I found it. Here she go, right here. I knew I had set it to the side, but I should have put it in the deck. Look at this gorgeous woman, beaming with joy from the inside out. Looking like a ray of sunshine, honey. Work with the color yellow, because all of us are going through solar plexus activation. Healing those things that stand the way of, in the way of us showing up confident. Able to manifest our heart's desires because we're confident in a <clears throat> successful ending stepping out on faith and doing that thing that we once feared stepping out to do and Oshun is a generous so generous that she sometimes like me finds herself um in, at odds with people in relationships because then you always are needing to make sure that there's reciprocity. But for many of us, especially empaths, when we love, we love so hard that we give, 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 and we're not even paying attention to not getting back until our cup is empty. And then we realize, damn, I've been giving to people and giving to situations that have not given back and I'm, now I'm drained. So you want to be mindful of your generosity. Where do you lack generosity? Are you the type of person that's always receiving and ain't never got shit to give? Shame on you. <laughs> um, because that has nothing to do with your physical possessions. Even if you don't have it, tangible items to give. You can give of your emotion. You can give of your time. You can give of a listening ear. You can give of good advice. It don't take much. Are you the type of person that overgives? Where does that come from? Why are you overgiving? Why are you people pleasing? Why are you draining yourself for the benefit of others? Are you the type of person who would lay down on the tracks to save somebody else? You want to be mindful of those imbalances. Now we're going to see. So I'm going to put Oshun back in the deck. Shuffle up a little bit. And see what message our spirit team has for us at this time as we move forward into yet another week. Spirit, what divine feminine energy are we needing to? Woo! Uh-uh. Y'all. That's a lot. Lord have mercy. <laughs> That's a lot. Lord have mercy. Look, not that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. We gonna go there. Of course, I ain't gonna read all of these. But we gonna go there. I'm gonna be obedient. Then we got to pull the top and the bottom, I just heard. So the card that fell out on the table, plain and clear for us while the rest of them fell on the floor, is number 49, breaking down to, what's that, 13, which breaks down to a four. The thing that's going to help you feel more stable right now while you're feeling fragmented and all the, over the place is humor with goddess Uzume, Uzum. I'm not familiar with her, but we're about to tap into her energy because we are needing to prioritize humor in our lives. Yo, don't be waiting on somebody else to make you laugh. It's not their responsibility to make you happy, to provide um, high vibrational experiences for you, to provide a good time for you. That's all you, boo. That's your responsibility. If you joined us for the play class that I taught on last Tuesday, this was one of the things that I pointed out that helps to keep us youthful, that we need to be intentional about. Play is prioritizing love and accountability for your youthfulness. This individual here, this goddess, she looks very youthful. Skin popping, smile popping, like she's happy. Something has tickled her funny bone. <laughs> and you all are needing to tap into that. Cut on a, um, a comedy movie. One of your favorites that you know will make you laugh. 
or explore a new one. Go buy you a Laffy Taffy and read the joke. Hopefully it's one that makes you laugh. Call your funny friend. Your friend you know gonna say something that's gonna leave you cracking up. Go to a comedy show, but prioritize laughter in your life because it is your responsibility to laugh. Stop taking shit so serious. Loosen up. <laughs> what we got next? Spider Woman. <laughs> Co-creation. We are all co-creating together. It's a whole lot of red, orange, and yellow energy in these cards. Those lower chakras are needing our attention and it's represented by the number 48, which breaks down to a 12, which breaks down to a three. Because we are needing to align with individuals that we can co-create with. People who are as passionate about the things that we are passionate about. So that we can do our due diligence in creating using our creative energy to bring things from imagination, planning state, to actual fruition. Because we're all co-creating. We're co-creating with the flowers and the trees and the birds and the butterflies because we're all living beings. So be mindful of how and who you are co-creating with. And that goes back to that tantric healing, that sexual energy. We're needing to prioritize paying more attention to that doing the research to learn more about it and add it to our everyday activities. Bridget. Bridget came out in another reading, y'all. I'm trying to think of which one it was. I don't even remember using these cards in another reading, but I know I saw Bridget here lately. But anyway, creative spark. Again, that creative energy needed to come forth. For many of you, as you are doing the work on yourself, you're becoming lighter, leveling up, raising your vibration. You're going to see how your creative energy is increasing and you're going to have a creative spark. You may just be watching the comedy movie and then bam, you have a light bulb over your head, a, cre a, a creative idea, a new idea. It's all intertwined. Because you are going through transformation. Shaktai. That Shaktai energy, baby, ain't no joke. Represented by 45, which breaks down to a number nine. That's ending some cycles. Ending a cycle. Ending the cycle of poverty consciousness. Ending the cycle of uh, sexual uh, being affected by and moving throughout this world as a result of your sexual traumas. Ending a cycle of operating. Ooh, what's going on with my throat? <laughs> from your shadow, ending a cycle of not being aware of yourself and your surroundings. You're going through a transformation. And that's that initiation we've been talking about. Number 33, break it down to a six because you're, you're transforming the balance within your relationships. Your relationship with money, your relationship with yourself and also, and most importantly, your relationship with yourself and people your emotional state is transforming and so you're needing to work with water with mama what's this ocha <clears throat> with this beautiful adornments on she is laced in this gold and turquoise y'all know i'm loving it but you're needing to work with water make sure that you're staying hydrated take your spiritual cleanse and baths even if you just use some epsom salt i'm telling y'all Epsom salt in your bath is a spiritual bath because you're cleansing your energy. But you can go a step further and add your essential oils or your herbs, your candles, your incense, and be intentional about what you're using to help you to heal. But you're wanting to work with water and you're wanting to pay attention to your emotional state. If you live by water, go give reverence to the water. Spend some time near the water. <laughs> what did we just talk about? Number six, Benzai Zen. Beauty. Prioritize beauty in your life. Look around you. How can you beautify your home inside and out? How can you um, increase or upgrade your beauty regimen? Don't be walking around looking half cocks. Me and my homegirl were going out the other day and I had those acrylic nails on, but they had grown out to the point where I needed a 
feeling bad. But I just got over COVID, had not been able to make it to the nail shop. And I needed, we, she and I had like last minute plans for brunch. So I was like, girl, I ain't gonna come if I can't get these nails off. Cause I ain't stepping out the house half cops. I need, I need to be together. I need to be at least up to my standard, at most up to my standard of beauty. And it felt so good to put my lipstick on and throw on a soft dress and step out for a moment because I prioritize beauty in my life. I'm working on my yard, my flower bed. I'm working on beautifying uh, my home. I have to have a beautiful home. Again, that is a part of uh, tapping into ocean energy because you're gonna level up with your beauty and your self-care and your the aesthetics. It contributes to your experience and your day-to-day. So for anybody out there, you depressed, you've been worried about this, that, and the other, and you're letting your appearance go, ah, ah, this is going to help you to heal. This is going to help you to walk toward the light. This is going to help you to attract. Beauty attracts. It's going to help you to attract that which you seek. Take care of your hygiene. Take care of <coughs> your appearance. Kylie. Baby, Kylie, keep coming out. Liberation. The number 25 breaks down to a seven with us just having experienced this seven portal energy because it's liberating us from all the things that stood in the way from us tapping into this energy. The energy of beauty, the energy of water, the energy of transformation, the energy of creative spark and co-creation and humor. Kylie is that that goddess energy that's gonna come through and, and and clean house she's going to take those things that have hindered you and transmute that pain into passion and pleasure top of the deck <laughs> number 46 breaking down to a 10 which breaks down to a one because there are new beginnings for you this is setting you up for your future. God is skulled. Your future is bright. But you're needing the clean house. You're needing to clear the clutter. You're needing to stop dwelling on the past. You're needing to be intentional about pouring your energy into things that are going to help you heal instead of pouring your energy into the hurts of the past. So we're definitely needing to take care of some... Um, Heart chakra healing, working with the color green. Solar plexus energy, working with the color, all of the lower chakras. While you at it, just go ahead and do the work to balance all of them. <laughs> How about that? And at the bottom of the deck, mm, mm, mm. Bronwyn. These cards are beautiful, y'all. The images, oh my God, these ladies are slaying. Forgiveness. Another seven showing up. We're needing to do the work to forgive. I know personally that's been my work here lately. To release resentments and to forgive. So y'all tap into that Ho'oponopono that we talk about. That's a Hawaiian um, practice for helping to forgive. Work with your rose quartz. Get you a piece of uh, rhodochrosite or lepidolite. It's a, a purple crystal. Um, I usually have a road across eye on this um, altar, but I don't right now. Um, but yeah, those are crystals that help with forgiveness. Yo, when you walk around with all that resentment in you, you're hurting yourself. You're not hurting the other person as much as you think you are. And the hard part about it is it's really hard to release that forgiveness and resentment when you feel so justified in where they got you fucked up at. <laughs> But again, you only hurting yourself, like they say. That unforgiveness, that's po poisoning yourself. It's not really about the other person. You have to free yourself. You have to liberate yourself so that you can walk with less baggage in the future and be ready with arms wide open, heart wide open, to receive the gifts that the universe has for you for having done this work. And honestly, y'all, the work... Okay, y'all, as I was saying before, the camera so rudely cut out. That is the message. So I leave you all 
hoping that you get all the help, healing, and happiness that you desire and deserve. And with that being said, y'all, peace.